Well, thank you, Chairman Newhouse, and uh, not only for your leadership here tonight in setting up the special order, but also your leadership on the Western Caucus, which is a voice for, I say, not just Western issues, but rural issues all across uh, the country. And I'm, I'm honored to be a part of the Western Caucus, even though I reside in Arkansas, which I do say at one time was a Western frontier. Uh, over its 50-year life, as, as has been discussed, the ESA has gone from being a law geared towards recovering at-risk species through conservation to now becoming a weapon to control land and activities through a misguided concept of preservation. And Mr. Speaker, I think it's important that we take a minute here and look at the difference between conservation and preservation. Conservation, which the Endangered Species Act was built around, is the idea of being a good steward of the resources we have, of taking care and tending uh, to the habitat of these endangered species. It really is like being the gardener of the habitat. Where preservation is this idea that you can preserve something in the natural world, and you really can't do that. The way you preserve something uh, that's living is, for instance, you take a cucumber, you boil it in vinegar, and you preserve it as a pickle. And Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, what I want to say tonight is conservation is for critters, preservation is for pickles. <laughs> and the Endangered Species Act, as it was written in 1973, was about conservation and taking care of these at-risk species. I went back to the, uh, the Endangered Species Act of 1973, and I want to read here what the people who came before us set forth in Congress in the findings of the Endangered Species Act. The very first finding was that various species of fish, wildlife, and plants in the United States have been rendered extinct as a consequence of economic growth and development untempered by adequate concern and conservation. They put, pulled that out in the very first of their findings. It goes on to say, the United States has pledged itself as a sovereign state in the international community to conserve to the extent practicable the various species of fish or wildlife and plants facing extinction. And then if you look at the purpose of the Endangered Species Act, it, and I quote directly here, the purpose of this, this chapter, the purposes of this chapter are to provide a means whereby the ecosystems upon which endangered species and threatened species depend may be conserved to provide a program for the conservation of such endangered species and threatened species and to take the steps as may be appropriate to achieve the purpose of the treaties and conventions set forth in subsection A of this section. Our uh, men and women that came before us knew that protecting endangered species was all about conservation. The Endangered Species Act was actually passed as a call to action in conservation, but it has devolved into a weapon for stagnation and leverage for political activism. The irony is that a misused ESA actually does more harm than good to the animals and plants that it was uh, put in place to protect. As chairman of the Natural Resources Committee, I have four guiding principles that inform my priorities and they are access, conservation, innovation, and transparency. And in my view, the ESA falls short of all four. The ESA often denies access to our public lands and negatively impacts private property rights. The ESA denies access. The ESA fails at conservation, and it's been mentioned many times here, as only a minuscule, less than 5% of listed species have ever been delisted. Uh, it's already been brought out. The Endangered Species Act is a modern day example of the Hotel California. You can check in anytime you like, but you can never leave. In addition, the act disincentivizes innovation and private investment while at the same time lacking transparency. Uh, we've got cases of private landowners who are doing conservation and trying to take the actions necessary to help the habitat for species. And when those species get listed, it's always hands off, don't touch it, we're gonna preserve it. And uh, that just doesn't work. And it's not ever going to work. And it's, uh, the example is in the dismal recovery rate, the way the ESA is being implemented. Um, we've made reforming the ESA a major part of the committee's business. 
If we, if we wish to truly help threatened and endangered species, then we must strongly support science-based habitat management, and we cannot, we cannot tolerate the weaponization of the ESA for political activism. So far, this Congress, the Resources Committee, has held two legislative hearings on bills that address fundamental flaws with how the ESA is being implemented. These bills include three Congressional Review Act resolutions designed at providing oversight of Biden administration rulemakings that represent the true excesses of the ESA. Each of these CRA resolutions have been passed by the U.S. Senate on a bipartisan basis. In addition, three other bills heard by the committee deal with the species that have long been uh, recovered, the grizzly bear and the gray root wolf, as have been mentioned, uh, but these species have been prevented from being delisted due to persistent litigation by activist groups, even with Republican and Democrat administrations saying these species have been recovered, uh, they're still on the list. Following these hearings, the committee held a markup on April 27th that resulted in all six bills being reported favorably by the committee. And I ask all of my colleagues to join in supporting these measures. But this is just the beginning. This Congress and Natural Resources Committee will bring forward policies that promote transparency, science-based decision-making, flexibility, voluntary conservation within the ESA. It is my desire to have a hearing and hopefully a bipartisan markup on legislation to allow the restoration of America's wildlife habitat. Focusing on wildlife habitat restoration is definitely the ounce of prevention worth many pounds of cure when it comes to species recovery. I look forward to working in partnership with, uh, with you, Chairman Newhouse, and the Western Caucus to ensure that we continue to move the ball forward on bringing much-needed reform to the ESA. Maybe we need to, it's not being reauthorized in 50 years, maybe we need to rewrite it and put it up for, for reauthorization. Um, again, I thank you so much for your leadership, and I yield back. Mr. Chairman, thank you.